Hello, good morning. And uh, so uh, my name is Jean Fajardet, and a uh, great, great pleasure to uh, share this session with uh, Martin Gillard. And uh, it's really it's a special, uh, special moment, special time in the Euro PCR meeting uh, to uh, deliver the Andreas Grenzik uh, Ethica Award. Um, that's uh, really, for me, what's Certainly, what's one more important point uh, time during uh, this meeting? Each year, we need to uh, celebrate somebody or a group who have a major impact uh, on the, our way of uh, uh, working, way of treating patients in our cat lab. So, um, welcome for this uh, Andreas Grenzik Etika Award ceremony. Um, we, this year we have a worldwide group of uh, specialists to honor and Martin Gillard is uh, here to join me and uh, to present a very, uh, this very special and uh, unique uh, and essential uh, award for the unique essential community. Martin. Thank you, Jean. And uh, it's, uh, I am so happy to, to share with, with you this uh, very important moment. It's often said at PCR that together we do more than one. And we firmly believe that uh, we all is about the patient. There is no group of individuals who are more represented than this value than the nurses and the allied professionals. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome Lynn Interbuchner, Sarah Carson, and uh, uh, Karen Wilson, who are here as uh, the representative of the nurses and allied professional community. So, nursing and allied professional um, have been absolutely are and will be for the next year, I'm sure, absolutely essential in our uh, CAT Lab uh, activity. Uh, this is essential by their commitment, uh, their skill, their uh, importance. We have been uh, really highlighted uh, during the, the last uh, two years. 
and it's true that uh, during the, the pandemic, uh, we also, that uh, without them, uh, the cat lab could not be uh, operating. That's a reality. And uh, for those who have not uh, uh, be sure that uh, this was a reality, thanks to the COVID, everybody realized that uh, without the nurse and higher professional, nothing could be uh, performed. So some cat lab actually had uh, to close. Uh, that's another reality. We are post COVID and we know that in some hospital, uh, some cardiology department uh, are to close uh, some part of the uh, number of beds. And it's a pity. Why? Because uh, we have not enough uh, nurse and I professional to maintain the activity. This is the same uh, currently for some uh, cat labs. So, Sarah. Uh, just a question, did COVID have uh, an impact on uh, your patient pathway? Um, yes, it did. So um, some patients at the start of the pandemic um, were very afraid to come into hospital. So not only did we have to defer some patients because they, were, they could wait till after the pandemic, people didn't come into hospital. So we've, we've got massive increase in our waiting list now to deal with. Um, and also because of that, we saw a massive decrease in people presenting with STEMIs because they were afraid to come in. They didn't know what to expect when they came to hospital, so they didn't come to hospital. So for the first part of the pandemic, we didn't have any people presenting with a heart attack. And then at the latter half of the pandemic, we've had people presenting with completed infarcts who are much sicker. So we've had to deal with much sicker patients with less staff because staff have been redeployed to ITU and to look after other patients. Um, but the thing that's come out of the pandemic for me is the enhanced teamwork in the cath lab and the way all the disciplines are pulled together, the doctors and nurses, radiographers, physiologists, to do the best for our patients. Thanks, and but, uh, but indeed it's important uh, also to look uh, at the positive. Martine. So, Lynn, tell us how COVID impacts you as a nurse. Thank you, Martine. Not being able to care for our non-emergent patients because of COVID was really frustrating. Everybody was angry. The patients, the families, the staff. There was appointments canceled. There was interventions that weren't being done. A lot of that anger came back to the nurses. We were the springboards of everyone's anger. Communication was very poor because of the masks. We all know you can't see the nonverbal communication, so masks made it very difficult to speak with our patients and families. Yes, it would be extremely difficult. Mm. So, um, Karen. Uh, what improvement uh, could be made to ensure nurses and uh, allied professionals stay in their job, but also how to attract in the future people in this field? Very good question, Martine. I think it's really important that the world is taking more notice of nurses and allied professionals. I think the world has learnt without them, beds and even whole wards may shut because there's simply nobody to look after the patients in hospital. I think there's a greater need for investment in our training, our continuing education, and also our work-life balance. But I would say that most of the nurses and allied professionals I know are still absolutely passionate about the work they do. They love caring and advocating for their patients, and we want the best outcomes for them, and the patients are the reason we stay in our job. Yes, I think it's important to, have, to keep this patient alive, and, uh, because you cannot be replaced by <laughs> technology, <laughs> I'm sure of that. I agree. <laughs> so, the, it's true that um, every uh, single day in the, in the cat lab where we see of this uh, efficient, how it's committed, your, your community. And, um, you take care of uh, so many things, just uh, to set up the, the cat lab. Um, important is the protection of all the team against radiation, uh, to assist uh, us in so many uh, areas in the daily practice, uh, the echo, prepare imaging the technology, uh, ECMO, uh, intrauterine balloon pipe, all these kind of, of things. 
And, uh, and certainly and, uh, on the top of that, there is a constant uh, you know, need for learning, mastering the uh, teaching the, the, the younger generation, specializing also when you have a new technology uh, coming uh, uh, on the market. And so the, all these things is the, makes that you are really uh, special and we have a really special work. Uh, this is the, what I will say, the really huge duty, and uh, huge work in the CAT lab, but in the same time, it's a beauty of uh, our daily work. And, uh, and on top of that, of course, uh, at the end, you assure the, and you give the best care for the patients. So, I would have to tell us how is important you are, and uh, we have for you a surprise. <laughs> when my patients come to see me before a procedure, one of the most common questions that they ask is how long the procedure will take. Patients perceive this as a measure of the severity of their condition and they are concerned about their family waiting anxiously outside. What I tell them is that the time I spend working in the cath lab is a minority of the time that they will spend in the cath lab. I tell them, you will be met by nurses who will explain further to you, who will comfort you and prepare you for the procedure. They will give you any intravenous medications that are required. You will meet a technologist who will connect you to monitoring equipment and you will meet a radiographer who will connect you and prepare you for x-rays. All of this in a calming, pleasant environment. By the time I come in, you will be relaxed and ready for me and we will all work together as a team to make sure that your procedure goes well. Should there be any difficulties my team of allied professionals is highly experienced at making sure that we deal with any challenges. Don't worry, you are in good hands. I would like to personally thank the allied professionals in my cath lab for allowing me to be here at EuroPCR and enabling me to represent your fine endeavors and achievements. Your work is absolutely essential and greatly valued you ensure that patients have good outcomes. I would like to congratulate you and all the teams around the world for this fine achievement. And I'm delighted that you've been acknowledged here at PCR today. No heart team is complete without the input of nurses and allied health professionals. Without you, interventional cardiologists, cardiac surgeons and imaging specialists would be lost. Thank you so much for everything that you do for the most important people of all, our patients. When I was first informed that you, the nurses and the life professionals uh, will be awarded the Andres Brunswick Ethic Award for the year 2022, I was extremely pleased and happy. After all, you have all been working behind the scenes and always in the background. Come to think of it, I will not be able to do the procedures I'm doing right now without the support and assistance from all of you. The case has been complex and highly technically challenging and also high risk patients. In the end, we work as a team to try to ensure we get good results for our patients and they, uh, they go back home in a well or good state. Once again, I would like to wish and congratulate you all for this award. I really thank you for uh, this word, this uh, message from uh, Farel, Bernard, uh, Rosli, and uh, um, it, everything is true. That's a reality, and uh, really, again, happy to be here and uh, share this important moment with Martin, you. And uh, you know that ATK Award was uh, founded in the 2001. Founded in 2001, and since uh, uh, this uh, date, you could see on the screen uh, all the 
major figures in interventional cardiology, uh, we have received uh, this award. I will leave you the time to look at uh, uh, this, uh, this slide from 2001 to last year, and you could see uh, uh, all the, really, the major figures in interventional cardiology, what we have made the history of the interventional cardiology have received uh, this award. So, what we can say? You, we are, you are really an excellent company. <laughs> it's, it's a well-deserved well achievement. I completely agree. So. so, it's time for the... <laughs> this award. <laughs> it's very I have the big responsibility to hold it. It's very... <laughs> so, Martin, come with me. Come on here. Okay, so from the older group of uh, Euro PCR, we have really the great honor for Martin to give you the 2022 <laughs> Andras Grunzik Award. Wow. Wow, wow, and again, wow. Tears in my eyes when I saw those pictures in the beginning today because we hadn't seen them. The speeches from the physicians welcoming us, appreciating us. This award means so many to all of us NAPs and allied professionals. Thank you for the recognition. EAPCI and PCR has always been supporters of the nurses and allied professionals, and this is really showing the recognition that we deserve. And you guys are the first organization that has showed this to the world that nurses and allied professionals matter. Thank you. Thanks. We're just yeah, welcoming some more join nurses us. and allied professionals up onto the stage. So I just like to thank on behalf of all the nurses and allied professionals, um, the recognition for being given this award. We are really, really proud. We don't seek praise for the job we do. We do the job because we want the best outcome and, and um, care for our patients. But having said that, we are so proud to get the recognition. So thank you. Um, I would just like to echo what Lynn and Karen have said. This is absolutely amazing to have all of our hard work and dedication recognised. I'm so proud to be a NAP and I'm so proud of everybody here today. And it's not just for us here in the studio, it's for everybody that works in interventional cardiology. So my one going forward message to everybody who does that, who's a NAP, is keep the momentum going. I'm so proud of you all and keep up the good work.